Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. This is an eight-part series video on Exchange Server 2007 on configuring LCR replication. This is specifically part five of an eight-part series. And in part five, we're going to on purpose fail the original storage group in an LCR configuration and verify failure of mail flow. Also, remember in part four, we already verified that we do have mail flow to the storage group. So if you want to confirm that the LCR configuration is working, go back and make sure you check out part four of eight. You can also find all my videos upon YouTube under YouTube tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. And for high quality downloads, make sure you check out www.itvideocoach.com. Hey, welcome back everybody. This is part five of an eight part series demonstrating LCR. In part one, we prepared our disk drives. In part two, we created the mount points using those drives. In part three, we created storage groups uh, using the mount points that were created. And when we set up the storage group, we use the LCR copies. In part four, we tested email flow. Now in part five, we're gonna on purpose make that fail and actually see errors occur that we have a, a database situation where we're down, okay? So welcome everybody to www itvideocoach.com. You can also find all these exchange videos and 2003 and 2008 Active Directory videos out on YouTube. Uh, the tag there is Grizzamore, which is G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. If you just do a search under there, you can find everything nice and together. They're not always sorted perfectly, but they're pretty close. If you want to get the video in one nice contiguous video, you can always go to the website and get the full video. It is nice, however, to have them kind of cut up into pieces. Uh, that way you can just look at just the parts you want. You don't have to sit there and watch a, a, 20, a 25 or 35 minute video necessarily. Probably the main thing you're looking for is part six, but it is important to know how we got to that point, especially in this presentation, because we're looking at how to use mount points. Okay, so in part four, what we left off with is we were logged in as Ricky, and Lucy, Ricky and Lucy, and we were sending email back and forth between them, right? And we were able to send mail successfully between Ricky and Lucy. Okay, no problem, everything's working great. We're using a storage group, we use a mount point, we have the LCR enabled, uh, we can see that we have uh, mail coming in and out. Once again, let's take a look at the mount points that we created. Here's our storage group mount point. And we can see that we have our log files getting a little bit bigger as we send more mail through. And there's our LCR copy. Everything seems to be asynchronously played through correctly. You know, you always hear that terminology like asynchronous log shipping. You know, we can actually see that we have the same log files where your email gets written initially on both storage groups, which is pretty cool. So you can actually see it in action. And we can see that we have our mailbox database. Our mailbox database is up here we go. There's our database and there's our storage group, okay? And it's using a mount point. Storage group three is a mount point that points to a volume called storage group three. So if you didn't look at the other videos, just check this out. We're gonna go out here and take a look at our um, computer management. And we want to see uh, the two volumes. Now we have a volume called storage group three. That's just the name of the volume. That's not the actual storage group. Now the storage group is actually called storage group three and it is stored on this physical volume, but the label is just storage group three. The mount point is storage group three. Okay, so I named everything the same just to keep it consistent. So don't get confused between uh, which one is which. And we're actually writing to this one and this is our copy. So what we wanna do is purposely fail this. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna delete this volume. And it's gonna take a minute because we're actually accessing the volume. So it's like, wow, you know, what are you doing? You're trying to delete this, this volume that you're using for your storage group. So it kind of times out a little bit. It's like, wow, why are they trying to delete this volume? And then we're, we're gonna receive an error that's gonna tell us that, you know, this is an active volume. Are you sure you wanna remove it? So there's our error message, okay? Tells us it's currently in use. So we're gonna force the deletion and then forcing the deletion also takes a little bit of time. So we'll come back and look at that in just a second. 
okay, we can see that the volume has been deleted. Now I'm going to remind everybody it's very important to make sure you go back and look at all part one, two, three, four, five, because you need to understand that specifically in this presentation, we're looking at how to use mount points for LCR. So if you've never worked with mount points before, it's important that you look at that whole process to make sure you have it set up correctly. Okay, so it's gone. So we deleted the volume. Let's go take a look and see how Exchange reacts. Now I gotta tell you that sometimes the interface is a little slow in picking up the fact that we've lost that volume. Okay. So we're going to let this come up. And then we can also kind of test it with Ricky and Lucy to see if they can send mail to each other or not. So we're going to bring it up, see how it looks, and we're going to test email flow. And it takes a minute to refresh. Now, like I said, it doesn't really know quite yet what's going on. Uh, it says that it's mounted. Now, you can always force dismounting if you want to uh, because the interface is just not aware yet that that database is gone. You know, it takes a minute. I found if I close this and I'm going to go out here, I'm logged in as Ricky, and all we did is kill the database. So if we open up Outlook, and we try to make a connection to that database to send a message to Lucy, we should have some serious issues here. Let's create a new message. We can still see Lucy in our offline address book, so we'll send a message to Lucy. And is the database, is the database up and running? Is the database up and running? Okay. Let's see what we get here. And we cannot connect to the database, okay? So we're definitely down at this point. And we're going to then open up that MMC back up again. And we'll see what we got. Let's see if we have any kind of errors. So it's very important that we actually prove and test and make sure we know how it works. It's very important that you test these things in a lab environment, go through the video presentation, follow it step by step, set up your server, build your nice high-end Blade or Dell server or HP server, get your drives all configured, install your operating system, get Exchange installed, uh, go through the whole installation process, get it built, do all your planning, and then test these failures. It's very important that you can recover very quickly in a situation where things are not working. Okay. So make sure you take the time to test everything and go through the whole process. And then document it. So if it ever does fail live on you during the day while users are working, you can try to recover that as fast as possible. And there you go. We can see that it has been dismounted because that guy is not out there. Okay, the copy status still shows healthy. Uh, I haven't been able to get that to break on purpose yet. I'm not really sure if there's something I can do to get the healthy to go away, but I do know for sure that the database is down. Okay. So that was the main point of part five. We wanted to, on purpose, fail the source storage group, test that mail flow was not working, so we could see how to fix it in part six. Okay? So make sure you come back and see part six.